and get started. Um, so great to be here. So great to see all of you. So my name is Tanya Das. I'm the Chief of Staff for the Office of Science. We have a fantastic discussion here for you today, all about small businesses, small business innovation, clean energy, climate change. It's going to be awesome. So I wanted to briefly introduce our three panelists, and then I'll turn it over to the secretary. We've got Dr. Judith Latimer of Giener Inc., based in Massachusetts. We've got Dr. David Bomsey uh, of Mesa Photonics, and that he's based in New Mexico. And then we've got Maddie Hall of Living Carbon based in San Francisco, California. Three amazing companies working on amazing things. And now, of course, I'm going to turn it over to our phenomenal Secretary of Energy, Secretary Granholm, to you. Over to you. Thank you so much, Tanya. Um, good afternoon, everybody. I'm so thrilled that you've all joined us today because we have some awesome news to share. So I like to call the Department of Energy America's Solutions Department. And today we are announcing that um, we are gonna be providing $110 million in new grants to dozens of American small businesses that'll help us generate solutions to some very big problems in areas ranging from energy efficiency to advanced manufacturing. So as we all know, Small businesses are such an important piece of our economy. They generate trillions in GDP every year, accounting for around 44% of the country's annual economic activity. And they employ small businesses over 47% of our entire workforce. But what people don't know is that DOE each year invests on average about $300 million in small business uh, activity through our small business innovation research and small business technology transfer programs. It's, um, it's an amazing effort. And today it's $110 million. So year in, and year in and year out, DOE identifies visionary entrepreneurs in need of just a little financial boost uh, for the incredible ideas that they're working on. And in particular, we look for founders who are socially or economically disadvantaged, women-owned businesses, and, we, and women-owned businesses, both, right? Uh, and other businesses too. And we provide the financial support that they need to build the next big thing. And, advanced computing or cybersecurity or clean energy, so much more. So that in turn helps these small businesses grow into bigger ones. But one thing you should know about me anyway, is that I'm totally obsessed with creating jobs. And it's not lost on me that small businesses with fewer than 20 employees, that they routinely count for the highest amounts of net job creation in the country. So as they grow, they not only hire from the surrounding community, they actually provide income to the surrounding community, like the grocery stores and the restaurants and the bars and the childcare centers and the healthcare centers the suppliers, the electricians, the contractors, they all benefit when a scrappy small business starts taking off. So we at DOE, we are really proud of the support that we give to America's small businesses because they really are the special fuel that's powering our economic engine. So today I am so excited to announce this first cash infusion for 2021 in grants uh, to 86 small businesses located in 24 states, 86 small businesses in 24 states, $110 million. $100 million of that is coming from our Office of Science. Another $10 million is coming from ARPA-E, which is our cutting edge research and development arm that's focused on, on high potential and high impact and early stage technologies. These awards are going to support projects that are advancing a, a range of our core missions from, from advanced manufacturing to uh, wind turbines to next generation instruments for atmospheric measurement to, to particle accelerators that can help to answer some of the biggest questions we have about the universe. We know that for any small business owner, every bit of new money like these grants, every bit, is a game changer. 
and it frees you up to pursue that new idea in earnest without having to worry about whether you can afford it along with payroll. So in fact, nearly two thirds of past SBIR grant recipients, nearly two thirds of them later reported that the money that they got from DOE was transformational for their company. Over three quarters of those recipients managed to secure more outside funding for their projects later on. So it was huge, a huge catalyst. So after the year we just had with so many businesses that have been put through the ringer during this pandemic, this kind of grant could really be life-saving. So we're really excited to watch these businesses put their innovative energies behind these exciting projects and bring new products and services to market. So today we're highlighting just a few of them, all focused on climate and clean energy. And know that since day one of this administration, we have made it clear that we're all in on getting America on the path to 100% clean electricity by 2035 and a net zero economy by 2050. And we recognize that, that reaching goals that ambitious are going to require all of America pulling together. Each and every one of us has a role to play, and that includes small businesses. So the folks we've gathered here today offer just a few examples of how American businesses can help us meet this moment, addressing the climate challenge with, with creative and entrepreneurial thinking while creating greater opportunities for new jobs and securing our energy infrastructure from threats and shoring up our own capacity to produce clean energy tech right here at home. So I know they'll have some fascinating projects to tell us about. Um, Tanya, you already introduced them. Should I go ahead and ask uh, questions of them? All right, I will do that. So David, let me start with you. I'm, I'm totally passionate about uh, supporting small businesses because they are the engines that keep the nation running. And I wanna make sure that I'm doing all I can at DOE to support small businesses and give them the resources that they need to grow and to develop uh, new and innovative products. So tell me about the economic development that Mesa Photonics has supported in New Mexico and what's the impact that the DOE SBIR program has had in the support of your small business. Hi, thank you. Uh, I really appreciate being here, being able to talk and reply. Uh, just a little bit of history very quickly. Mesa Photonics was started by my business partner, Daniel Kane, in 2003 as a software company. In 2008 and nine, we switched to manufacturing because it allowed us to expand more. We are one of the businesses that you mentioned that's under 20 people. Uh, the SBIR program has been instrumental in our growth. It certainly was dramatic in our ability to keep our doors open in 2020. Uh, we did not have to fire anyone. We maintained all salaries. Uh, we are very grateful about that. Uh, all of our products, if you look on our website, all the products, including everything that's in the pipeline now, have come from SBIR support. Uh, we're in Santa Fe. New Mexico is a pretty uh, low income state on average. Uh, so we make a big difference. All of the multiplier effects that the secretary mentioned are things we see. We're now up to nine employees. We have an author out to a 10th. We'll probably do an additional one later this year. We hire locally and train in-house. And the only exception there is when we um, need to hire PhD level people, then we're looking nationally because we're talking about highly specialized education and background experience. Uh, we manufacture our products here in Santa Fe but we sell worldwide. In the last few years, there have been a couple of years where our national, where international sales have exceeded national sales. Um, we have established a very, uh, recently established a strong relationship with the local community college to get paid interns, emphasize paid interns, uh, coming in to do engineering work. And one of those interns we've gone on to hire so these are areas in which SBIR money has come in to support our research. The research has led to products. The products have led to our ability to expand and to have a real impact 
in uh, northern New Mexico. I, I love the, I, I mean, I, you know, small businesses hiring people in thousands com of communities all across the country. And these, these stories, you know, we often talk about millions of jobs and all this, but these, it all breaks down to one by one by one people being hired. So in addition to the hiring that you just described, what uh, is the actual project that this particular SBIR award is gonna support? How is it gonna help us in our, our fight against climate change? So the project, uh is awarded for developing new technology for measuring the formation of droplets and clouds. Uh, in dro cloud formation is the intersection between climate, meteorology, atmospheric science, and global warming. And it's also the least well understood aspect of atmospheric science. It's an area of tremendous interest to DOE, a lot of DOE money going into that particular well, year at atmospheric radiation monitoring program. And we help to support the work that's being done there. And uh, that's what the project is all about. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you and congratulations. It's pretty exciting. Well, thank you. Um, let, me, let me move over to Judith. Um, as I mentioned, Judith, what I love about DOE is that we're the solutions department, although all y'all bi small businesses are obviously deriving solutions as well. When faced with an, with existential crises like the climate crisis, we're focused on at DOE coming up with answers to the problems to create a better future. And I'm wondering if you can tell me about the project that you're working on with this SBIR funding and why the technology is important for that fight. Absolutely. So for our project, we're developing a technology to allow for the direct production of hydrogen from sunlight. So as those of you at DOE and in the clean energy sector know, low cost clean hydrogen is critical for a zero emissions future. Um, in addition to being one of the most heavily utilized industrial chemicals, hydrogen can also be used to store stranded wind and solar capacity and then used later to produce clean energy and electricity. Um, so our approach is to develop a self-contained system for hydrogen production from sunlight, which would only require water and does not produce any CO2 emissions. So this technology has several advantages, primarily that you don't need an, uh, an external electricity source in order to produce the hydrogen. So you can use this technology in more remote locations where electricity is intermittent or unreliable, or after natural disasters that would cut off your traditional power infrastructure. So to do this, we're developing an anion exchange membrane technology, which allows us to use cheaper and more earth abundant materials, which is an advantage economically and for environmental sustainability. Wow. So. Um... Is that, is there, are there electrolyzers in that process? Is that, I mean, how is that, how does that work? I don't want you to get too sciencey because, you know, we don't want to lose people, but just, I mean, hydrogen for everybody who's not in this is like the big next thing. Everybody's talking about hydrogen, both as a fuel, but also as an energy carrier. So tell, tell us a little bit, like, what's the process? Yeah, so it is, um, it uses electrolysis, so electricity to do water splitting, but the electricity here is coming from sunlight that is being converted into, um, you know, electrons and holes in order so to make the hydrogen. green hydrogen then. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. It is, it's the, it's the big new thing, everybody. So um, how will the grant then, the award, help to advance the commercialization of green hydrogen as you guys have been proposing it? Yeah, so this funding is critical. Um, the technology is currently at a pretty low technology readiness level. You know, it's not commercially viable as yet. And so this funding will let us develop a working prototype to demonstrate the functionality of our system. We're collaborating with uh, university groups that are doing, you know, very fundamental research. And so by integrating these um, this more fundamental research with some more mature engineering solutions that Keener has developed, we can use this funding to prove the technology, solve the challenges involved in scale up and make it more marketable. I love it. That's so awesome. Well, good luck on it. Congratulations. So excited to be able to support that effort. Um, all right, now Maddie. So I understand that your company's focused on using biotechnology uh, to develop trees that can capture and store carbon better. So tell me a little bit more about the project that you're gonna be working on with your SBIR award. Of course. Uh, so as you mentioned earlier, our current path of the climate crisis has severe consequences for humanity. And out of all the ways to remove a large amount of CO2, 
planting trees is cheapest and easiest, but it also has to be profitable to landowners. So living carbon is developing seedlings that grow faster, produce more durable wood and capture more CO2 per acre. A lot of people don't realize that as trees die, wood and roots are broken down by fungi and CO2 is released back into the air. So our SBI project is to use advanced biotechnology to develop seedlings that produce more durable wood by accumulating metals from the soil as they grow, slowing the re release of CO2 in stored wood products. So this metal enhanced wood not only slows the release of CO2, but allows landowners to get more carbon credits and increases the durability of wood products. Wait. So trees that are absorbing metals that actually capture CO2. Yes, yes. So they, they're able to survive longer underground. Their roots and biomass break down slower. That's amazing. Because of the metal. That's yeah. so cool. So how is your company um, going to benefit from working with ARPA-E during this uh, SBIR grant funding? Yeah, so our company was founded only two years ago, um, and RPE is incredibly well connected in the energy space. And one of the main benefits from working with them is that they act as a historical record keeper with all of this institutional knowledge to ensure that we can incorporate learnings from past projects into our new project um, and continue to innovate and push technology forward. They're able to collect, connect us to different colleagues and disseminate our research across a broader audience. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, it's super exciting. Let me just ask you all just to respond quickly because uh, to this last question, because as you know, the president has set an ambitious goal for us to reach, you know, net zero carbon emissions by 2050. And meeting that is going to require new technologies like what you are describing today. Um, and I'm wondering, do what, uh, talk about the role of small businesses in that kind of big clean energy transition. And maybe I'll, I'll do it. I'll shake up your order a little bit. Judith, why don't you go first and then David and then Maddie. Sure. Uh, small businesses with a flexible, dedicated expert small teams can rapidly try new approaches to solve problems and are essential for developing the technologies to allow for a clean energy transition. Here at Keener, we've been working for decades on alternative hydrogen production technologies and, um, you know, with a lot of support from DOE. So for example, after spending 20 years developing polymer electrolyte membrane electrolysis for energy storage, we sold this technology last year to Plug Power in order to scale up that manufacturing capacity to really jumpstart the green hydrogen future. And today, you know, we're working on the next generation of energy technologies, lithium sulfur batteries, um, these anion exchange membranes, um, and high temperature electrolytes, electrolysis um, in order to you know, further lower the cost of green hydrogen. And so we've developed relationships with more fundamental research groups at universities and national labs through these programs. And it would not be possible without support from the SBIR program. Well, it's, um, I'm, I'm telling you all these solutions uh, start with a, a kernel, an idea that it blooms from a small business to something bigger. So David, how about you? What, uh, what is the role of small businesses in getting to our big goals? Okay, two quick answers. One specific to what I know best and that is we think that you can't control what you can't measure. And so a lot of DOE support has gone into uh, instrumentation for measuring, in measuring things in chemistry, physics, and biology. And all those are needed in support of any project that attempts to uh, reduce amount of carbon dioxide, um, even, things with car sorry, even things like carbon capture, where you're guaranteeing uh, geologic capture. And then somewhat very different, uh, bigger picture, is that small businesses have a lot of social uh, license. You gotta be, we are honest to say that the fossil fuel industry and to some extent government are viewed with a lot of suspicion by people when it comes to True. both understanding global warming and mitigating. Small businesses are local, we don't have baggage. It's easier for us to communicate with people and to get the message across. And I think that social acceptance is incredibly important and in many ways as important as the technology that's being developed. That is very cool. I, I think that's so true when you think about it. 
I mean, the most highly respected people are, are nurses, teachers, and small businesses. <laughs> And the mm -hmm. least are people who work in government. But anyway, at least I should say that. I shouldn't say that. Are politicians. Okay. So go ahead, Maddie. What, what would you, how would you answer that? How can small businesses help to get to our big goals? A lot of these markets are emerging. They're brand new, right? Especially the carbon markets. And no organizations are better suited to move quickly and adapt to emerging markets than small businesses. We can scale up to meet growing demand, pivot if something isn't working, and invest a lot of resources where things are working. Um, I also think that we're able to solve hard projects and paint a picture of what a zero emission carbon neutral future could look like for the United States. Um, and to do this, we have to reach across the political aisle. Small businesses can show that doing good for the environment can also be good business. Totally true. You guys, Judith, Maddie, David, thank you so much for taking your time to tell us about these projects, your companies, the projects you're pursuing. They're such perfect representations of the of the big impact that our small business community can have in our effort to uh, confront the climate crisis. And that's why this administration's fully invested in supporting companies like yours. So later today, you'll be seeing President Biden's gonna be announcing the American Jobs Plan, which is a massive once in a century investment in our nation's ability to compete in and to win the race for 21st century innovation. It is big, it's bold, it's got benefits for small businesses. And when we pass that plan, cross our fingers, right? Small businesses across the country are gonna get access to $31 billion worth of credit and venture capital and R&D funding. I wanna, and thanks to major investments in manufacturing, those small businesses will be able to partner with American manufacturers to build new industries right here at home with the help of American workers. And that's how we'll level the playing field, not just between us and our international competitors, but between American businesses, frankly, of all sizes. So to our viewers who joined us to hear about the fabulous work that your companies are doing, I encourage you to take some time to listen to the president's speech later today. Perhaps that'll inspire you to strike out on your own path of entrepreneurship. And who knows, maybe we'll be awarding you grants on your own big ideas for climate and energy innovation in the years to come. But in the meantime, we'll be eagerly following the news around these three companies. I wish you all the heartiest of congratulations and the best of luck. Thanks so much.